The Value of Vaccine Many of us are acquainted with the popular phrase, prevention is better than cure. Whether we spend our lives playing by the rules of this phrase or pay heed to it as a part of a warning that our parents bestow upon us. Regardless of its popularity, this phrase is altogether accurate. We observe our food intake and keep our bodies moving, to avoid stacking on extra pounds. Or we avoid foods we are allergic to, to avoid a reaction. All these anticipatory measures are to avoid unnecessary medical treatments. To avoid going through the risky journey of regaining our healthy selves. Vaccines are in a league of their own in this world of preventive medicine, a crucial category, known to prevent diseases and deaths worldwide. The primary function of vaccines is to prevent the transmission or development of an infectious disease. Therefore, ultimately preventing infections that may lead to irreversible complications. A brief history of vaccine. To understand how vaccines work, we need to know a bit about their history. The practice of vaccination goes hundreds of years back, although it was not officially called vaccination, nor were their proper vaccines. What was known was that this practice yielded significant results. For instance, in 17th century China, Buddhist monks drank snake venom to build up immunity from snake bites. Sounds pretty crazy, right? But this method must have worked since these chronicles made it into historical literature. Officially, the first ever effective and well-researched vaccine worldwide was the vaccine against smallpox. Once known as a lethal global infection, smallpox caused a blister-like skin rash. The sequelae of this infection included permanent scarring that can lead to disfiguration, blindness, and death, particularly amongst children. Drastic consequences of a disease, isn't it? Fortunately, the father of vaccines, Edward Jenner, was able to refine a method of vaccination against smallpox, a method first developed by E. Timoni. This method, involved taking the pus from a person infected with the cowpox virus and injecting it into a healthy individual. The healthy individual would then demonstrate immunity to the smallpox virus. This process led to the inception of the word vaccine, vaca means cow in Latin. Thus, the manner of giving vaccines means vaccination. And over the next 200 years, multiple changes and improvements to this vaccine eventually led to widespread implementation. In 1978, the first smallpox vaccine was officially developed. The mass immunization against smallpox proved to be a success, eradicating smallpox worldwide by 1980. Finally, ridding the world of this contagious and deadly disease. Vaccine 101 So, how is it that vaccines can protect you? What do they contain? How do they work? The answer to these questions is within you, your immune system. All around us are disease-causing organisms known as pathogens, in the air, surfaces, and on our skin. Yet, not every pathogen causes an illness. Our immune system is the highly organized armed force that safeguards our bodies from these pathogens. Once they recognize the invader, they go all out to protect the body from the harmful effects of the pathogen. That is, they produce an immune response. But, how does our immune system identify the invader? Well, pathogens contain many subparts, and the essential one that forms the identity of the pathogen is the antigen. When the immune system recognizes these antigens, they know that there is a traitor amongst themselves. Therefore, immediately upon identification, the immune system elicits a response to attack the pathogen. In labs, scientists have found a way to break down these parts of a pathogen. Vaccines contain the antigen subpart of a pathogen, the portion the immune cells recognize and develop a response. This immune response will be mild but enough to produce antibodies and immune memory cells. Thus, upon confronting this antigen again, these antibodies and memory cells will re-merge to augment the immune response. So, 
before the pathogen has a chance to produce a full-blown infection, the immune system will eliminate the pathogen. Some vaccines will need booster shots to produce long-lasting antibodies and memory cells. The importance of vaccinating children Children have an underdeveloped immune system. Their bodies are still growing, fighting various new pathogens daily, and overcoming these dangerous obstacles. For this reason, vaccination programs begin in infancy. It is because of this vulnerability that children often get sick. Daycares and schools are the hotbeds for pathogens. Because of the proximity between children at these locations, it does not take time for one sick child to spread an infection. And if an unvaccinated child were to get an infection, the consequences will be severe. For instance, the lack of vaccination against measles is the leading cause of preventable death in children worldwide. Other than the general symptoms of measles, complications include middle ear infection, pneumonia, inflammation of the brain, and blindness. Vaccine and herd immunity. The purpose of vaccination is not only to protect ourselves, but also to protect those around us. So how is it that when you get vaccinated, you will be protecting your community? By phenomenon known as a herd or community immunity. When a majority of a community is immune to a disease, it reduces the chance of a pathogen spreading within the community. Consequently, the opportunity of an outbreak can become so low, eventually eliminating the transmission of disease. Herd immunity is particularly beneficial for individuals who cannot be vaccinated. Infants, young children, individuals with a compromised immune system, pregnant women, and the elderly, their safety depends on the vaccination status of others. The bottom line. The origin story of vaccines dates many eras. Over the years, scientific advancements have led to discovering new vaccines against old pathogens and the ever-evolving new ones. Choosing to vaccinate is a personal choice. But this is a decision that has implications on the community as well. Good health is a priority for every individual, however, being a member of society, it is also our duty to protect others. New articles are posted each Tuesday, to watch and listen to all parenting articles, just click on channel below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. To get notified of new videos, please subscribe and hit the bell.